guilty in the arrest of Freddie Gray. Officer Edward Nero was on bicycle patrol last April when he was called to assist in Gray's arrest, helping to put him in the van where Gray suffered a fatal spinal cord injury. Officer Nero leaving court, cleared of the charges today. His acquittal is the first decision in the case after an earlier trial of one of those officers ended in a hung jury. Tonight there is now extra security on the streets of Baltimore amid the debate over, over whether justice has been served. ABC's David Curley is in Baltimore. The 30-year-old police officer entered court facing up to 10 years in prison for assault. Tonight, he is the first officer cleared, cleared of four charges. Officer Edward Nero was on bicycle patrol the morning that Freddie Gray was arrested. That's him holding Gray as he is handcuffed before being put in a police van. Nero wasn't in the van, which made several stops. During one stop, Gray's legs were shackled and he was placed unrestrained on the floor of the van. At some point, his spine was severed. A week later, Freddie Gray died, sparking those angry, damaging riots. It was a different scene today, Baltimore largely quiet, police don't go to jail like we do. with additional police officers brought in from surrounding communities. The prosecution tried to prove that even as an assisting officer, Nero didn't have probable cause to arrest Gray. A conviction could have set a precedent. Had he been found guilty of these crimes, officers across the country would have felt uh, that they could not arrest people, that they could not do their jobs. This is the second setback for the prosecution, which charged six officers. The first case ended in a mistrial with a hung jury. The family's lawyer doesn't believe today's acquittal will affect the other cases. How's the family doing? They're taking it uh, with grace and they understand how the process works. They understand that uh, there's a level of unpredictability in criminal cases. The next trial, which starts in just two weeks, involves the van driver and the most serious charge in the Freddie Gray case, a charge of murder. David? David Curley, live in Baltimore for us. David, thank you. We turn... Now, let's... Let's... Let's, um... Analyze this. Okay. Was he the one took him to the van? Did he see any fucking, um... Uh, shackles there did he see any kind of safety belts or anything like that um boy i, I wish the fuck i was cross-examining that motherfucker first thing i'd say did you see did you see safety belts there uh and he might have said uh no i didn't see him now what the fuck are you doing on this department you can't even fucking see how could you see the fucking uh uh fuck with this person in the first place how the fuck do you ride a bicycle now the question that needs to be asked is, is um, cops on a regular basis, yeah, they run across people that will fight them, but at the same time, don't they train to do that? That's just like people in war. They train to fight. They don't, they, they train and expect it. The cops they expect that shit. Now, you'll notice that the cops, uh, he probably never even saw a day of fucking jail other than uh, getting his bail. And then, then he would probably on paid leave all this fucking time. In the state of Florida, they got something called the Florida Policeman's Bill of Rights. Man, you wouldn't believe all the fucking rights they got, man. But they can take and put false charges. Me, Jim Bike, man, they put goddamn false charges on me, man. Fuck. There's so many times I felt like I wanted, wanted to fight them motherfuckers. But then what I had to do is I had to think about, well, they, the cops are so fucking protected that if you touch one of them, then you're charged with battery on a cop. And that ain't no misdemeanor for, for like you and me. That's a fucking felony. Um, I was arrested uh, 2003 because I tried to get a cop to do something about a fucking boom car. James Williams, piece of shit motherfucker. Used to be at the Panama City idiot fucking clown department. Okay? I was arrested again um, 2011 when I tried to see about uh, doing something safeguarding my community about these fucking boom cars. 
these motherfucking boom cars, these American enemy terrorist motherfuckers. And um, what happened there? I tried to I tried to get a jury trial on that one. Piece of shit public pretender Blair Daffin said, well, I did you a favor, man. I had to charge her up. I said, no, you didn't fucking do me a favor. I wanted to drag that motherfucker in the court. Just like um, June 2015. I was all set to go to a fucking jury trial, man. When Shane R. Van saw everything that I came with, he knew, he knew I was going to kick, verbally only, I was going to kick that cop in fucking court so goddamn bad, it's incredible. Further proof, um, well, I had to go six months waiting, go, doing court appearances. Sergeant Stryker, that piece of shit motherfucker, not one time had to go to court. Because he knew that if it was ever a trial, there'd be all kinds of fucking news there. And I'll guarantee you, they was waiting. And I'll guarantee you, Shane Arvan said, Nah, we can't afford to have... We can't have, afford to have that crazy-ass motherfucking bike man cross-examine this motherfucker and put this motherfucker in prison. Yeah, Shane Arvan, the judge, he knew... He saved, he saved that cop's fucking ass. So, see, the thing is this is... They have a million different ways to escalate a situation. Indirect assault. That's a favorite thing. Um, I had a guy by the name of Danny Cashmere Pipers pull a fucking knife out on me. 2007. And uh, this motherfucker, I guess, didn't realize. Um, I think I was around 57 at the time, if I'm not correct. Uh, anyway, I was in my 50s. Um, I could take and routinely uh, put my put my feet on a chair with a heavy 10-pound weight around my, my waist, put my toes on a chair and my fist on a floor, and knock out an easy uh, 13 to 15 push-ups I did daily. Well, now it's uh, May 24, 2016, and... Today, I did 20 push-ups where I put my toes on a desk and I put my fist on a floor and I knocked out 20 of them motherfuckers. I don't brag that, that I can do it. I thank my maker that I can do it. I thank my maker. I make it a point to thank my maker daily in the morning when I wake up, when I go to sleep. I don't count sheep, I fucking count my blessings. So, see, thing is this is, now here's another thing too, a little dirty secret. Anybody can demand a grand jury. No, only grand juries are basically used by the prosecution to protect dirty cops. Grand juries are used by the prosecution when they want to prosecute somebody. So, analyzing this situation, I'll bet you there was a pussy ass, I'll bet you that prosecutor didn't ask, did you see that belt? Why didn't you, why didn't you fasten him? That, that's a hate crime right there. And then, I'll bet you, they said to the, uh, the driver, give, give, Give Freddie Gray a special ride. You know what I mean? One of them carnival rides where you go over traffic, traffic stopping bumps and everything like that. Where you go over parking lot bumps and everything like that that are designed to uh, keep cars from uh, running over. Make sure that you, you find all the fucking potholes and give this motherfucker, and, and when you stop, don't just stop regular. Slam on them motherfucking brakes. See, the thing is this is, if they had a video camera inside that van, that cop automatically, I, I'll bet you they didn't, didn't uh, give any of them a uh, uh, lie detector test. Did you go by uh, accepted proper procedure? Then, then you say, say to them, you understand, if you come up lying on this motherfucker, you're automatically getting five years off the top. 
So, what what goes on? Cops have got all kinds of protections. Now, I'm not against cops. We need cops, but we don't need criminal cops. And this is the reason why I created something called a PDF Oath of Arrest and Prosecution. And I can guarantee you, there, there ain't a dirty cop that can stand up to this motherfucker. It is designed to put their asses in, in prison so fucking far that they'd have to pump sunshines up their ass for a hundred years. See, the thing is, this is, um, I don't start no trouble with nobody. As a matter of fact, I've had in the past somebody get mad at me because I was a little bit too loud and, and, and noise. What did I do? I didn't turn around and say, you stay on your side, I'll stay on mine, I pay my rent, I'll do as I damn well please. No. I told this guy, I said, please, if you ever hear me again, please, if you do not tell me then you are doing me a disservice because then I can't turn around and and show a, a ultimate consideration for you and maybe other people too. Well, because this guy saw my attitude and saw that I was willing to go way over backwards to um, um, accommodate him. It probably shocked the shit out of him because he's never had anybody do that. Well, I'm a firm believer. I don't care what color skin you are. Um, you treat me right, I'm going to treat you right. If, if I think that I've um, violated you, I'm going to be quick, quick to apologize. And I've apologized to this person several times. And I told him, I said, I'm gonna try to be the best neighbor you've ever had. Now I don't know, I don't know if I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna give it a try. Now, this guy said he's right. He said that um, uh, compared to regular citizens, they wouldn't get all these fucking protections. Where I'll guarantee you, the police union probably p paid the lawyer, defense lawyer, probably a hundred thousand dollars. See, the thing is, this is, the cops are actually a fucking gang. That's, that's what the police union is. It's a gang. Right or wrong, they're going to get him out of jail. And then they're, I guarantee you, he's lucky if he spent even a couple of days in fucking jail. I guarantee you, he probably was in and out of the jail. So what happens is, that, that guy was right when he said it, it ain't the same for, for a civilian compared to a cop. 